So this is kind of weird. I've got a bunch of turkeys, a mama turkey and her teenage baby turkeys, I'm assuming, all kind of hanging out by the chickens. And the chickens are looking on in curiosity. Who are these interlopers? <laughs> I've seen these turkeys in the back pasture. I was never able to get footage of them, but they seem to have moved out here. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing that they're out here. You guys ready to go outside? Hang out on the grass with the big girls? I think that means yes. Welcome back to the Yostead. Hope your Wednesday is going well. Mine's going well. We got a new chicken plucker. Want to see? Pretty nifty, huh? Let me turn it off. As exciting as the world of chicken plucking is, we're not here today to talk about chicken plucking. We're actually here to talk about zucchinis and lint rollers. Let's go. So as you probably surmised from the beginning of this video, we removed the two plants from our primary zucchini bed here in the kitchen garden. They were no longer zucchinis as much as they were a retirement home for squash bugs. Thousands of those little guys. I know a lot of you folks have commented that maybe they were squash vine borers, but after doing a little bit of research on the types of bugs that we've just been seeing flocking into this bed, we determined that they were squash bugs. They look a lot like stink bugs, but I don't think they're exactly stink bugs. They may be related. Either way, they love any sort of curcubit or vine plant. I think squash is their favorite, but they also like pumpkins, cucumbers, melons, things like that. So as you can see behind me, we got rid of the zucchinis and this bed is now being sheet mulched. We've got some paper bags under here and I put some compost on top. We're going to let this sit for a few weeks and then we're going to start growing greens in there. We're not going to grow squash or any sort of curcubit plant in this bed for a while, probably not next year. We might wait a year or two before we put squash, any kind of squash variety in here. Regardless, there are thousands of these bugs and I know that they are probably on the hunt now that they're homeless for a new host to take over. And that's where this lint roller comes into place. Basically, you can see, you can see it here on this pumpkin actually these little eggs and that's where these squash bugs come from they lay little patches of these ruby red eggs and that's 
those are baby squash bugs in the waiting, ready to come over and take over. So in addition to spraying neem oil on the plants, I've also been taking this lint roller and just taping these, taping these little eggs up. A lot of people will also use duct tape on their fingers and just collect these. And after all the reading I've been doing, there's a lot of folks that have recommended something called BT, which I'm probably going to pick some up this week. It seems like one of the best things you can do for squash bugs is just coming out to your squash plants, your pumpkin plants, your cucumbers, your melons every day and getting these eggs up because that kind of halts the population from growing. So that's what I've been trying to do over the past few days is just collect these eggs wherever I can. And if I do see actual squash bugs spraying with the neem oil, see, so check this out. I just squirted this squash bug here with the neem oil and he died within probably 10 seconds or he's dying right here. This stuff really does seem to do the trick. So it's essentially a war of attrition. There's gonna be squash bugs here. They're gonna start taking over some of these squash and cucumbers, but I just need to disrupt their reproduction cycle as much as I possibly can by collecting these eggs, throwing them away, and squirting them with neem oil. Meanwhile, the girls over there, the chickens, get to eat whatever plants I do cut up that have squash bugs and throw over there like they did with the zucchini plant. They're really enjoying eating it right now. So am I disappointed that we lost our main source of zucchini and we may lose more squash, we may lose our cucumbers? I am, I am bummed about this, but not as disappointed as you might think I might be. This has been a really good learning experience for me. We didn't deal with squash bugs up in Michigan, but we're dealing with them pretty bad here. And so I've had a chance to deal with them for the first time and I kind of know what to expect next year. I'll be able to be a lot more vigilant next year when the season starts and I can start hunting down those eggs and killing them off. Maybe even get a vacuum, like a shop vac out here and suck them up when I see them. I'll be able to do that early and often and hopefully nip any squash bug infestation in the bud next year. In the meantime, yeah, it's kind of a bummer. We love our squash. We love our zucchini. If we have to sacrifice some of them this year for a learning experience, I'm okay with that. In the meantime, I'm gonna keep an extra vigilant eye on the pumpkins because I don't wanna lose those pumpkins. I want at least two or three pumpkin plants to get really healthy and big. So I'll keep an eye on them. Anyways, let's shift gears here a little bit to the chicks. We're gonna do something new with them today. We're gonna to move them out on the grass. Keep them going here. You guys ready to go outside? Hang out on the grass with the big girls? I think that means yes. So I've had a few folks ask me why we just didn't use this tractor as our main chicken brooder. There's a couple of reasons, but the primary one is that during the first week or so of a chicken's life, when they're in the chick stage, they can't be exposed to any drafts whatsoever. It's important that they stay very warm. And so setting them up in this tractor, as appealing as it is for that first week, it's just a risk I don't want to take. They could get drafts, even in this really warm weather, they could get drafts. And so it's just something that we weren't really willing to risk. We wanted to have a dedicated brooder with thick, heavy walls. Especially when we start getting the meat chickens, there's gonna be a lot more chickens and we might get those in early September where there'll be some cold nights. So at the end of the day, we just wanted something that had solid 
walls and that was insulated. But now that these chickens are, I'd say maybe around two weeks old and they're starting to get more of their feathers in, I feel a lot better about bringing them outside. And besides, it's like 95 degrees today, if not warmer. So in terms of them catching cold, I don't think they're really going to get that cold on a day like today when the temperature is so warm. It's even so bad that I made sure to put them in the shade. I don't want them getting roasted by this just ridiculous sun today. So, so far, everything seems to be looking good. They seem very excited to be out here on the grass. The, the adult chickens, they seem a little bit curious, but by and large, they're not they're not too interested. One or two of the chickens, I think Molly here, she seems pretty interested in them, which makes me wonder if she'd be a good candidate for a mama for any future rounds of chickens we might have, or rounds of chicks that we might have. But anyways, I am gonna stay here in this area and watch them maybe 20 minutes or half an hour to see if there's any issues, but I don't think there's gonna be. These chickens seem very, very happy. These little babies seem very happy, very natural out here in the grass. Probably leave them out here for two, three hours or so before I bring them back into their brooder. I don't want to keep them out here for too long, especially overnight. I think I just want to give them a taste of the outside and get them used to walking around on grass. So three hours or so, and then I will bring them back to their brooder. Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys, on this kind of short little vlog post. I know things may seem kind of slow here on the homestead right now, but boy, they're gonna start picking up here soon, especially when we get the meat chickens rolling, which should be in a few weeks now. Anyways, it's supposed to be the hottest day of the year tomorrow, at least in these parts. So wherever you are, stay cool. And until next time, remember, slowly, slowly.